we traveled more than 350 kilometers from Kampala to Arapai village in Soroti district, where Francis Akelo retired into farming. The 85-year-old holds the enviable position of being one of the first African women to serve on Uganda Legislative Council, Uganda's pre-independence parliament. Akelo was nominated to the LegiCo together with Saran Tiro and Joyce Mpanga. She was sworn in on the 1st of April 1960, and the LegiCo members started the preparations for Uganda's self-rule. At the age of 24, Akelo was the youngest member of the Legislative Council, and she was keen to learn why everybody was eager to get rid of colonial rule. Not that uh, I knew very much about what was wrong with the British, because uh, I was the youngest member of parliament that time. I was only 24. So, well, there could have been a lot of things that British did wrong. For me, I was still attached to them because of the type of education they gave us. Akelo played very important roles in preparing for independence. She proposed red as one of the colors for the national flag that replaced the Union Jack. You know, red to me represented the blood, you know, and I thought we, we had the same type of blood you know, to be working together. And they prepared to travel to London for the Uganda Constitutional Conference that was held at Lancaster House, a meeting that would pave way for Uganda's independence. Akiru remembers the debate on the federal system of governance that split legal members. Then Kiwanuka, who was a Muganda then, and he was the chief minister at the time, he was the leader of the group. He's, well, he was very strong, strong against the federal. They said, you know, we are going as a country, as one. And now we will start splitting when we are there. It doesn't make sense. That was the biggest uh, hurdle we had in parliament. But, uh, and it, it actually went up to Lancaster House. We never solved it. When the group returned from London, some MPs were there to receive them at the Entebbe airport. Benedict Okiwanuka, who was later to become Prime Minister, addressed a press conference on the outcome of the Lancaster Conference. And in that press conference, he spoke in Luganda, because most of the people who met him were Baganda. But the translation I got was that he was not at all happy. The people you know, said, you call me a traitor, you call me all kinds of things, but I'm really praying to the Baganda to see some sense, so that we will we walk together as a country, you know. And uh, they said, but he, then he said, if you continue like that, you'll remember. Rubaganda, you are going to remember. You'll regret a lot. Chuanuka was firm in his belief that both Uganda and London should oppose federal because he supported a unitary government rather than identification of tribes. Despite the differences, the preparations for self-rule went ahead. Akero says every Ugandan, young and old from all over the country, were excited. When you hear Uhuru, everybody is excited and people are slaughtering cows and, and people you come home from, like, you know, Everybody wanted to come home. It was like Christmas. It was even better than Christmas. Because, you know, people started buying T-shirts, you know, written their uhuru and, you know. The events of 9th October 1962 are still fresh in Akiro's memory, and she remembers the excitement of the day. Sometimes I felt like uh, I was in a, a different world altogether, you know, because, and then also that excitement of saying, is it really true? that we are getting independence, you know. After independence, Legico was dissolved and Francis Akelo, who was a teacher, was deployed to Magare Secondary School in the Bugisu region. After going through a number of teaching institutions, she got a chance to go and further her education in the U.S. Akelo taught in a number of primary and secondary schools and teacher training institutions. The 1966 crisis, a period of political turmoil in the country, occurred at the time Akelo was doing a teacher training. She was staying at Makere University when she got the news. This man who was uh, helping to get the people to the 
mass grave. We saying we were ordered to push those people in, dead or alive. And he said many of them. As someone who was part and parcel of organizing for an independent country, she has disturbing memories of the crisis. I said, is that what we struggled for? All this time we were saying independence, when we get our own people, everything will be fine. Is this what we have got? That was, it kept on going. I, I think I had one of the worst brain tumor, tumors at that time, really. Because I thought, you, you, can't, you can't struggle for something and you're actually seeing the wonderful fruits in front. You see the sweetest part you are going to get, then you get a bitter, bitter fruit. What is that? It was bad. Akelo says it was at that time that she remembered why Benedicto Chiwanuka had said the Baganda would regret if they did not put aside tribal sentiments. But of course he also didn't know it would happen like that. He said it knowing that what we were doing actually was, was going to divide us further. So I think you will regret came true. I think they regretted. She says she did not expect Apple Milton Obote to attack the Kabaka of Uganda. The Obote I used to know and admire when he spoke in the parliament, when he, he analyzed his um, when he analyzed his policies and you know what, I couldn't figure out that he was the same person. I used to imagine, up to now I think, that was this man misled? Was this man, uh, you know, if somebody worked against him without his knowledge? Akero thinks the present leadership should take an interest in Uganda's troubled history. Agnes, I think we should have researchers political researchers that go into analyzing all the things that happen in our country or in Africa as general. Really, generally. There must be some power somewhere. There must be some people who are not happy to see a united, strong country and therefore a continent. As a senior citizen, Francis Akelo advises Ugandans to pursue unity for a better country. The former teacher turned the farmer says she is enjoying her retirement. Agnes Nandutu, NTV, Living History.